this is David, and I'm giving you an introduction to a three-toed box turtle. Uh, they're indigenous to uh, most of Texas and some of the surrounding states. Uh, they get about to five to six inches. They're primarily a land turtle, though they do occasionally like to swim. This is a female, and she's about 12 to 15 years old, and she's already produced fertile eggs. She is a long-term captive. Now, three-toed box turtles are a subspecies of eastern box turtle, and they are found in most parts of Texas and a few of the surrounding states. They grow about five to six inches long and can live up to 50 years in captivity and up to 100 out in the wild. And they tend to do better overall than the other box turtle species. Now, Characteristics of three-toed box turtles is most would think they have three toes, as this one does. But truth be told that there are cases where three-toed box turtles can have four toes. And part of this is due to that the fact that they share their range with Gulf Coast box turtles. And Gulf Coast box turtles' most characteristic feature is the back of their carapace right here is flared up, as you see right here. And even though she is a three-toed box turtle, she has some lineage of Gulf Coast in her, and this is pretty common. Now, box turtles are omnivorous which means they'll eat both meats and vegetables, as well as fruit. And they will prefer and chase down live prey, such as earthworms, insects, things of that nature. Now the coloration of three-toed box turtles will generally range from a plain light brown shell to a very dark brown with patterns on it. And as you can see right here, Olivia has kind of like a water droplet starburst pattern on her shell. This is not too common but in areas where they share their uh, their range with Gulf Coast, they will have usually a, a pattern of some sort. Now males will generally have bright orange to a deep red on their forearms, their neck, and their head. And with this female, they will usually have bright yellow to deep orange spots on their head. She also has a bit of pink on her nose and her cheeks, which is why I named her Olivia, because she's like the cartoon pig. But in overall, she has been kept in very good condition. Her shell is very healthy, and this is a defense that they get when they're scared. They'll close up in their shell like a box, and that's why they're called box turtles. They can close both the back with a hinge right here and the front with a hinge right here. Now, you notice something right here, these little pits on the side of the shell. They're always between the second and the third scoot on the back of the shell here. 
and this is pretty common with female turtles. And the reason for this is, is that during breeding season, the male will dig his front claws into these parts of the shell right here. And just for the three-toed box turtles, they've adapted to where there's an extra layer of tissue right there between these scoots that allow them to dig their nails into it, allowing them to hold on. Now, out of all the box turtle species, the three-toed makes an excellent pet due to their ability to adapt in captivity. They are the least temperamental. They rarely show any aggression whatsoever. They will condition to you very quickly, which that means is that they'll start to associate you with food. It doesn't mean that they'll become a tame or anything. It just means that they see you bring food. And so when they start to see you bring food, over a period of time, they'll start coming up to you because they know that that you are the provider. Now, when keeping a, a box turtle, there are major key things that you must have. There's no way around them. Uh, the first is is that you have to be able to supply them with D3. A D3 is a vitamin that they use to metabolize calcium, which is very important for a turtle because most of their body is bone. Now, in order for them to get this D3, they have to either produce it themselves, which they require UVB radiation, which they get from either natural sunlight or from a UVB lamp, which you can get at your local pet store. Now, the thing with them getting it at a the natural way is that their body will only produce just enough for them to metabolize the calcium that they eat. eaten. You can get vitamin supplements that have D3 in it in case that you're having problems supplying them with the UVB radiation. And this is just as fine, too. You can actually give them that instead of using a UVB light. Now, the downside to this is that when using D3 supplements, you can actually overdose your turtle on it because they cannot regulate the D3 that they get orally. Now, if they get too much over a period of time, they will start to develop several health problems. And this includes organ failure and eventually death, which are not very good things for your turtle. So when using the supplements, be sure that you only use just enough that they need. If they don't get either the D3 or the UVB radiation, they will develop what's called metabolic bone disease, uh, which basically means that whenever their shells grow, their bones are not growing fast enough to keep up. And so it causes deformalities. It causes, um, of course, weak bone structure. They can get broken bones a lot easier. And... Uh, overall health of the turtle is greatly depleted. Uh, another problem that they can uh, regularly get, but not too common in box turtles, but they can still get it, is called uh, pyramiding, which is basically if you give them too much protein, uh, they're starting at their very uh, earliest scoots, it'll start to grow outward, but not smooth. It'll start to form little spikes uh, from the earliest scoots, and it doesn't cause any actual harm to the turtle, but it d 
deforms them and it makes them quite ugly and it shows that they weren't kept properly. The most common health issue with box turtles is respiratory infection. Respiratory infection is a fancy name for a cold. While it is minor inconvenience for us, it can become deadly for a boxy. They catch RI from either an infected turtle or if exposed to a cold, humid environment, usually from poor keeping. There are two kinds of RA, upper and lower. The upper respiratory infection is not as serious as it tends to stay in the nasal cavity. Symptoms include sunken eyes, bubbles coming out of the nose when not in water, and swollen tissue in the upper roof of the mouth. Upper respiratory infections can generally be home treated by keeping the turtle in temperatures 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and daily soaks in lukewarm water. This helps the turtle's natural immune system to combat, combat the infection. If infected with upper respiratory infection for a long period of time, a turtle can get an, an ear abscess. This is a swelling of the ear which contains a pus. Now, unlike abscesses that we get, an abscess for a turtle is a really thick, cheesy substance which can't be lanced and drained. It requires a vet to cut the ear open and to scrape it out. It's, it's a very bad situation, but turnarounds are very good when taken to a vet. Another result would be a lower infection. Lower respiratory infections are very serious and will require antibiotics from vets. At this point, it becomes an infection of the lungs and pneumonia sets in. Symptoms include lethargy, wheezing, gasping for air, not to be confused with yawning, and liquid filling in the lungs. This can be told by putting the turtle in water and if it leans to one side while it's floating, then it's got fluid in the lungs. Now another thing that box turtles require is they need a lot of space. They love to roam. In the wild, they have a territory that spans around a mile. So even though you may not be able to supply them with <laughs> a mile radius of, of land to roam on, you can get them a nice size outdoor enclosure or a pen, which is fine too. But keeping them outdoors is the ideal condition to, to have them in, and they'll live a lot longer. Now, if you cannot supply them with an outdoor enclosure, an indoor one is just as fine as long as you supply them with the UVB or the D3. But you'll also have to make sure that they have plenty of room as well, which means for just one box turtle, you're looking at a uh, six foot by four foot enclosure. It can be made out of a bookcase. You can get one of those turtle tubs. That's fine, too. But one thing to consider, aside from the desert and the ornate box turtles, is that they require high amounts of humidity. So they have to be kept in a substrate that retains water pretty well. And they'll have to have uh, some body of water that they can soak in. Even though they primarily stay on land, they do need water. A final note on three-toed box turtles. Even though three-toed box turtles are well adapted to captivity, it is always best to start out with a captive-born hatchling. Nearly every adult box turtle seen in stores are wild-caught. All wild-caught box turtles have internal parasites that they can spread to your other turtles or can even kill the turtle if the turtle becomes stressed. While in shops waiting to be bought, they become stressed under cramped conditions and spread their illness as well as parasites to each other. The treatments are long and require dedication from both the owner and from the vet to ensure a happy, healthy life. 
Box turtles have also been in a decline over the years due to habitat destruction, development, traffic, and overcollection for the pet trade. Never pick up a box turtle off the road and take it home, unless it is injured or in the area is destroyed. Do help them across, please. Hatchlings run from $30 to $50 online through the classifieds. It is important to give them live red wiggler worms or they're also known as deli worms on occasion to encourage predatory behavior. They must be kept moist during the first four years of their life to ensure a healthy, well-developed shell. I hope you like this introduction and care of the three-toed box turtle and expect more.